Today, I've got a special treat. I've got a guest in the conversation segment uh, on my blog, and it's a new segment where I'm able to talk to some amazing people in uh, in the industry and also outside the industry. But today, I have a very special guest. This guest has been there and done that. He's been a domainer. He's been a, a conference organizer and founder of one of the biggest domain conference um, in the world. And, and now he's doing some incredible things with a new business, which I'm sure is going to impact what you're doing in your own business. But not, of course, I'm speaking of none other than Richard Lamb. Richard, it's so good to see you. Hi, Michael. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Like, let me tell you, it is a, it's a privilege to, to be able to hook up um, with, with you. Like right now, I'm locked down in Australia. I can't get more than five kilometers from my, from my house. You know, I'm talking online to you and you're in Vancouver. How's yeah, that? I'm in uh, Vancouver, Canada. You know, we're, we're not only sucked in with the, with the uh, um, virus thing that's going on, but we're also we're just covered with uh, the the um, forest fire smoke that's coming up from oh. uh, from Washington, and you know it's like don't leave your house, and now it's like don't leave your house, <laughs> you know. So it's uh, <laughs> unbelievable, yeah. And so so how is all that going? Because we I know in Australia here we experienced that um, earlier in the year where basically our whole eastern seaboard was up in smoke, and uh, you guys are going through a terrible time now as well. Yeah, you know, um, we've had it two years ago where BC, it felt like the, the entire province was on fire. Um, and now it's, uh, it's just south of the border in Washington and Oregon. And the, the smoke is just carrying up towards us. And, you know, two days ago, we had the worst um, um, air pollution standing in the entire world for, for a city. And I think we've, we've, wow. we've dropped down a little bit, but it was quite incredible. Uh, you know, if you've ever been to Vancouver, it's just an absolutely yeah. beautiful um, city. It's pristine. And it was. It felt like um, it felt like evening at at high noon uh, because the the smoke was that thick, and we're thousands of miles away. Well, that's that's terrible. I, I must admit, when in Australia went through a similar thing, like I said earlier in the year, and there was a time when um, both the uh, firefighters from the U.S. and Canada and, and a number of other nations as well, they came to Australia to help us out. And I'm, I'm not sure how much of an impact um, uh, that had, you understand the impact that had on, on Australians. It was like our friends are coming to be with us. And I know we've done now the same, we've sent firefighters back. Yeah. And um, what is it, it's great to love, there's no one when they lay their life down for a friend. And I think even at a national level, that's so true, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we all pull together during these natural disasters, and uh, there's no other way. Yeah. So our thoughts and prayers are with the people of California, Oregon, and obviously Washington as well. And it's pray that doesn't head up into Canada. Uh, I know the smoke is terrible, but the fires would be even worse. I think. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, like, I must admit, last week we had NamesCon. NamesCon, uh, for me, it was an amazing event, um, and it always is. But for you as a founder of NamesCon, what was it like for NamesCon Online? You know, I mean, it's, it's been a wonderful experience um, having founded the conference and then graduated on to being able to attend it in person. Um, it's, yeah. you know, I, I consider NamesCon like a child. Uh, you know, my, my kids are, are 17 and 20, uh, but NamesCon is, is my third child. And, you know, it was uh, um, being able to attend NamesCon in person uh, was fantastic because then I got to experience it instead of um, just being the host and running from room to room and from event to event um, and then yeah. with my host hat on. And so then last week, being able to attend it online, it was really um, heartwarming to just see it, um, you know, adapting to the time. Uh, to the changing yeah. times um, and to, to still bring together a global audience um, of hundreds and hundreds of people um, across all of the different time zones. And, you know, I loved how we had uh, Brinner breaks because, you know, it, for me, it was breakfast <laughs> and for, you know, for other people, it was dinner time and for others, it was the middle yeah. of the night. Um, I think that was I, for I, you. Must admit, <laughs> I must admit, I was getting a peanut butter and jam sandwich at about 3 a.m., just to keep me awake. <laughs> so, like I was doing anything to keep awake. 
Um, I had uh, like, I don't know how many coffees I had and that sort of stuff. And <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, and you know, I think they did a really good job of, of having it, you know, a four hour time slot um, each each day. And I think that, um, you know, they, it was it's tough challenging to be able to pick when to, to hold that when you're, um, when you're having people log on from their homes all around the world. So I think they did a, a fantastic job. The platform worked out really, really well. Uh, I think that uh, if you've ever used an online conference platform, there's always hiccups. Uh, but I think that the uh, the platform that they chose worked um, uh, not not flawlessly, but extremely extremely well. And I think uh, they yeah. uh, my hats off to to the new team that's running Namescon, and I think they're doing a, a great job as part of the GoDaddy family. I, I must admit, I, I completely agree with you on that. Um, like there were some teething problems at the beginning for me, like my desktop computer for whatever reason just couldn't connect. But then I went on my my sort of my laptop and boom, it was all working fine. But yeah, I look at that and I'm going, you know, it's it's, it's like this is as worse as going to get. Like yeah. right now, this is the worst it's going to get. So it's only going to improve from here. And I, I found like even during my session, I did a session on monetization, and it was. It was a surreal experience because there I am sitting in my study at home, talking away to my screen, and there's like, I don't know how many hundreds of people are there watching it and commenting, and you're almost getting like real-time feedback yeah. as you're talking, and it was, it, was, it was incredible. It really was. Yeah, I, I think that the, there's some things that um... – that I think they would adopt even when we go back to in-person conferences. You know, the ability for everyone in the in the room to be able to pose a question from their from their device yeah. without having to yeah. deal with going up to uh, you know a, a microphone. And so you had the speakers, but you also had the online moderator that could then field the questions. And I think that that's something that um, that we should adopt when we do go back to uh, in-person conferences. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the moderators did a tremendous job as well, because once again, it's new for them doing something like this. And uh, they, like Bill moderated the panel I was on and also my, my session, Bill Sweetman, and he did, he did a great job. But I know there's Krista Braden, and there's a number of other moderators, and uh, they all did a tremendous job, and they should be congratulated for what they yeah. did. You know, um, Krista Taylor the was the... Uh, Sorry. Sorry, Krista Taylor was the moderator for, for uh, my session with, with Rolf from yeah. desktop.com. And, you know, it's funny because Krista is from Vancouver, but I don't think uh, we've, I've seen her more than once in Vancouver in all of the years that I've known her. I only see her as a moderator at the Namescon conference. So it's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's funny you say that. There, there, there's this, this guy who lives probably 20 minutes from my house. And we only ever get together when we're at a conference internationally. <laughs> it's just, it's nuts. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know why it's the case, but it's, it's nuts. But yeah, so the other thing I found was the, the, um, uh, the networking area, the tables and things like that. They, they were just, it was amazing. Like you'd sit at a table and people would, start, would join you and suddenly your screen would be like, you're now video conferencing and away you go, you know? And you're meeting meeting people that you wouldn't meet normally. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's absolutely. the thing I loved about it. Like it was great yeah. meeting old friends and that sort of stuff and yeah. had, had a wonderful time. But there is a whole bunch of people that they probably wouldn't have come up to you if you're sitting in, a bar, in the bar or something like that at a hotel, but they're happy to click on a seat on in the networking area. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I, I've actually talked about um, – about a similar concept where you, you've got Zoom, you've got your room sometimes and you can um, you know, have it open. And, but what about a, a concept of, of an open office hour? So you, you say, okay, well, from three till five on Mondays, I am opening up my, my, my Zoom um, to the public and you can just drop in, just come on in. Yeah. And you know, you'll have some, some, um, some difficulties, but I think 99% of the, of the people that will come in will just be exactly like that. They'll be like, hey, Michael, I thought I would just drop in and say hi, right? And <laughs> yeah, you know, I think absolutely. That, that could be an interesting concept. Yeah, I, I think so. Like it's, it, it's, um, I found it was just fascinating, the interactions and, um, and, and the way people interacted. And it seemed to be almost more freely they're able to interact. Um, 
And uh, I, I remember after my session, I actually posted a note saying, hey, I'm going to go grab a seat at one of the tables. If you have any further questions, feel free to, to come and ask them. But suddenly I'm sitting at ta this table. There's like 20 people around me, like uh, one of the big tables there. I was like, oh, my gosh. And, and there's other people that um, were trying to um, – uh, other people that were trying to sort of get on the table and everything like that. So I hung around for, for a while. Yeah. And it was really, really good to be able to, uh, to interact at that sort of level um, where normally at a conference, you sort of, you can hang around uh, for a little while, but then you sort of, you have to get out of the room and that sort of stuff. And then other people catch you and everything. So it was really good to have that connection. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's another thing. I wonder if that's something that we adopt after um, um, after a, a talk in a real life um, conference. So we're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to be on the app in the networking uh, lounge and people can just, uh, you know, because that way you can have a conversation with 20 people at the same time. Whereas yeah. in real life, it's very, very difficult to have that um, for, with more than, you know, three or four people at, at the same time after after being a speaker. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether um, the, the, the new team decides to say, think, well, and hopefully it was successful now to, to, to run this more frequently. Like I, I must, like I must admit, I really, I really enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there'd be be very dis, uh, 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 unpersonal, um, uh, but it was the reverse of that, yeah. uh, which I, I really thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, I could I could definitely see them running it twice a year. Yeah, that'd be great because I wonder what's going to happen to NamesCon in Austin this year, this coming year. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, there's yeah. so much like with the COVID and everything. I must admit, do I want to jump on a germ tube, as I call them, and fly for 16 hours or 24 hours or whatever to get to Austin, Texas? Probably not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, so. and even if you do, your wife might not want you to, and then, then you're definitely not yeah. getting on the plane. <laughs> yeah, but more than that, when, if I come back into Australia, I have to be quarantined for 14 days. Right. Yeah, I think I got psychotic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, one of the things you're talking about at Namescom is a new venture you're doing, correct? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, logo.com and it's an online automated logo maker. And we're aiming to solve the problems that we see in the marketplace in terms of when you're as a customer looking to get a new logo. And we think we've done it and we're still continuing to work on it, obviously, but we think we've we are at a point where um, the majority of people that are looking for a logo that they need for like either a minimal viable product or a, a domain name or for a new business, um, we can be their solution. Yeah, it it's, uh, sounds like an amazing thing. Well, number one, the, the domain, like seriously, logo.com. That's obviously a $10 domain, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hand reg. <laughs> Hand reg. Yeah. Did it last week, yeah. <laughs> it, it, <it's, laughs> what a great domain. But uh, I must admit, you gave me a, a code that I could use and just uh, try it out. And I must admit, I, I, I came in, with, I was pretty skeptical. I was thinking, I come from a sort of, I, I do some graphic arts. I used to teach people in in um, design and layout and things like that. And I was I was pretty skeptical. Uh, yeah. But then I, I thought, okay, I'll give it a go because it's Richard. Yeah, like, oh, I'll try it out. <laughs> and I was blown away. Like, I was really blown away. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I just got a logo that would typically cost you, like, if you got a designer to do it, uh, yeah, uh, it would cost in some cases like thousands of dollars, right? Um, like yeah, some other people may do a quick, like a quick little thing for a few hundred bucks. But, but I can't remember what was the pro what's the price for logos uh, logos now? We've got three packages. Our packages okay. start at twenty dollars, sixty dollars, or a hundred dollars. And so, but oh, man, you know, for, for twenty dollars, it's, in, it's insane, right? We're really <laughs> turning the industry on its head. Yeah, you're ripping everyone off of those prices, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, but seriously, like uh, logos can cost so much money. And if you're just running like a, um, if you're just doing like a startup or something like that, you don't have the cash to do that. So, yeah. but you want a good logo. And the thing that surprised me was the variables I could input. I could input a whole lot of variables in and, um, 
uh, into the system. And then it came out with some amazing designs. They yeah, really you know, were what, amazing. What we're, sure, what we're aiming to do when we're, when we're um, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to program creativity. Um, and yeah. that's really what we're what we're after. So you know, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, you, you know, you're throwing a logo maker together. But really, you know, if you go to logo.com, um, the simplicity is um, after um, years of manpower of of actual programming. So you know, we we're, we're this is not something that we've thrown together and you know put plugged together some software development kits. This is this is hand programmed from scratch. Um, you know, we several years ago we actually did try licensing software piecing it together and seeing what would happen and it was so bad we, we turned it off and put it back to a park park page and you know just concentrated on resume.com and namescom mm -hmm. so once resume.com and namescom were sold then we we took a, a small break and then came back to it and said okay let's dust this off um, let's take a look at what the the market competitive marketplace is right now and what's available to us and we we hired local um as we did with resume so we've got local programmers we've got a local office well we did it until a couple of months ago um we, now everyone works from home and yeah. you know what we're aiming to do is to take that process when you are dealing with a design house or a friend or you know a, a logo contest which can take anywhere five to 15 days and we're mm. trying to compress that down to 20 minutes and yeah. the way we yeah. we're doing that is we're we're taking all of the conversations, the predictable conversations that that you would have normally, and we're putting that into our algorithm so that we can say, okay, let's spin up the two hundred Amazon web servers, um, have them process the conversations, and then present you with those findings. And that mm -hmm. way, you get to sit back as the customer and just do an infinite scroll to say, hey, which design will catch my eye? Because that's what we're yeah. after, is we're after that X factor of you as a human reacting to a design and to the creativity in that design to say, that's what I like. And then you, you, you take yeah. that design and that, then, the, then you have the ability to tweak it. You can tweak the icon, the font, the yeah. colors, the design, the layout. And you know, again, that's, that's a, a fine line between um, expecting your customer to be a Photoshop expert um, and having uh, not enough control. So that, that is a, a fine balance and we think we've achieved it. We're always tweaking it. We're always open to feedback and we're always looking at different ways that we can give you the power if you want it, but if you don't still give you the, the design um, options. And so it, it's, it's a lot that's a lot of work, a lot of thought, even into what, what it could be considered a, a simple product of a logo maker. Yeah, it, like I like I said before, is that I was amazed at the quality and the the creativity because it, it, it's obviously an algorithm driving all this and everything. And uh, I, I found myself scrolling through the options, thinking, "Yeah, I could use that. Yeah, I could use that one there too. Oh, there's another one there." They're all like really not just acceptable that they were good, right? <laughs> they're yeah. Really, really good. And as a designer, that that's that surprised me. Um, yeah, I think there's uh, for anyone who wants to get even just inspired of oh gee, I need a logo and everything like that, um, and they just want to get inspired. Uh, definitely go to logo.com. Like seriously, it, 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 for for a few bucks, like you you can put some stuff in and at least you get something even if you take that to another designer even yeah. if you take that to another i don't know why you would but even if you did take it mm -hmm. to another designer at least you've got some concepts and things like that you can you yeah. can you could have a proper discussion about you know what i mean yeah absolutely because you know for for you for twenty dollars you can um, develop a logo yeah. design that then you take to your your designer and it's going to cut 80 percent of the the time off so instead of spending 15 days you may only spend two or three days with your designer because you're starting not with a blank yeah. page or not with just a verbal, um, you know, description of, you know, a picture. And, you know, what does it, what does that font mean? You know, when you say it's kind of like two witnesses of a car accident, you know, it's so much easier to start with something that's, that's real and tangible. 
Yeah, and it's um, like every every logo evokes an emotion, and every typeface evokes an emotion. Things like that. It's one thing I used to teach people in design, is that everything you put on the page evokes something from the viewer, and to be able to have these that you can put in front of you, or say your graphic artist or something, is great. But to be quite blunt with you, I found they're acceptable just to go with. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So sort of like. Yeah, graphic artists, you know, may, you may not be doing many logo designs anymore, or you'll find you'll be tweaking logo.com type designs. And uh, I, I found that was was quite amazing. So it's so, so logo, logo.com. Is there any other things you want to share about logo.com? Actually, just before you continue on there, what was it like starting up another business? Oh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I have to say that I probably didn't take enough of a break uh, because yeah. starting up an, a business is, uh, you know, it's an all in endeavor and, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's sleepless nights. It's, uh, it takes longer. It costs more. Um, you know, there, nothing is ever easy. But if you, if you look at it as, you know, the, the obstacles and the, the difficulties and, and the, the challenges that you, you face and solve, um, that that's like a moat between you and the prospective people who, who want to come into the industry. Um, and so the harder it is, um, the harder it is for, for com competitors to come in as well. And so look, uh, I completely agree with you on that. I, um, it, it's an interesting one. Like I've been an entrepreneur all my life and, uh, I, I people sort of say, oh, that's such a big, big, tough problem. And I, and I get excited about that. Cause I think if I solve that tough problem, then, um, uh, then it's such a barrier to entry for anyone else. Yeah, so I, I love salt. Like one of the things that even at Pack Logic, we sort of have a view of if it's a tough problem, it's a good, pro good thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, yeah, so um, more the, after this? Uh, well, with, with logo.com, it's not just the logo. You know, the, the things that we're also trying to solve for, um, is just looking at it from a business, small business person's point of view is like, once you get your logo, what do you do with it? And, uh, you know, the, the most often people are, are say, okay, I need to sh now share it on, on Instagram or I want to create a Facebook mm. cover or I need uh, something to go into my Twitter profile um, or I want uh, some mock-ups that I can then put out on, on social media or I need a business card layout or letterhead layout. So those are things that we are then offering so that you don't have to be like, okay, now what do I do? Okay, now, you know, do I take this file? What size do I need it to be for my Facebook cover? It's like, no, you just go to the, your logo.com dashboard, you open it up, and chances are, we've already solved that problem for you because someone else has asked us for it. So when, when a customer comes and says, hey, wow. I need this instance, they're like, oh, you know what? You're not the only one, Michael, who's gonna want that instance. Why don't we <laughs> plug it into the dashboard and then make it available? Because, you know, it's, it's just the right thing to do and it's trying to solve the problems in, um, that we're anticipating people will will have and try and solve the use cases that we are anticipating that people will have and so that it's ready for you instead of you having to then go out spend some time and so you know if we can deliver a value uh that's that's 10 or 100 times more than you're actually paying it becomes an absolute no-brainer that when you know when you hear a friend say oh i need to get a logo or i'm starting up a business you're like hey i'm going to save you thousands of dollars and and, and five hours of, of time, just go to logo.com and get a logo there. And that way yeah. you're going to, to uh, be prepared. So, so what you're saying is it's more than just gonna be logos, it's gonna be like business cards, letterhead, social media stuff and everything. And sort of like tick these boxes, that's what you wanna get. And bingo, there it is. Exactly, because you know, when you're getting your logo, you get that's your launching point. I, yeah, when you get to the stage where I can tick the box and suddenly I end up with business cards delivered to me. Yes. Yes, we will be there. <laughs> and they'll be printed so, in Australia. Yeah, yeah. See, see that's, that's actually what I want just, uh, as a business owner is that one of the biggest hassles sometimes is just thinking about these things. And just to go tick a box, boom, it's all done. Oh, man, that would make life so much easier. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we envision that in um, probably either the end of this year or early um, next year, we'll have another package above complete uh, which is probably like the, 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 the material package, which you literally will have a tick box and then you will get your business cards delivered to you 
you'll have a golf shirt like this, you know, with your with your logo <laughs> on it, a coffee mug, a baseball hat, and you know, you basically your your mini one-off swag kit. And you know, just being able to have that so that you've designed your logo and then you've got your your physical, you know, uniform um, That's uh, ready and it just it just solves so many problems for a small business person that they can really just yeah. focus on their business. Yeah, uh, ab absolutely. It's um, yeah, it's, because there's so many things involved with running a business, particularly if you're a small business owner. Uh, quite often, it's just yourself, or maybe one or two other people. And, and you, there's so many things you've got to do that these sort of things just become headaches. Absolutely. And if they, it can be solved just by going to logo.com and solve for 20 bucks and you've got your other packages there as well. Like I think that a small business owner would be crazy not to, not to avail themselves, at least even just a look. Exactly. Um, look at it. And that's the thing. And for, I think for the domain investment community, one of the things I know about the domain investment community is that, and I, I encourage them to do this, is to take at least one of your domains, just like what Richard's doing right now, and build it into a real business, which means you're going to need a logo. So go to logo.com. And, uh, and and by the way, Richard, how much of an affiliate do I affiliate um, see, uh, re referral do I get? From, I, I think from I'm doing paying this? 110 percent at this point. Am I? Yeah, I think <laughs> no, it's zero. Right? zero so so I'm zero. Sorry. Nothing in it, guys. <laughs> I would just go to logo.com, and I'd say I need to build out a domain. Bingo! There's my there's my there's my logo, and just just do it. Like, is there a package? Like, if you can get like a sixty dollar package, you can design like twenty logos or something, or you know we're toying with that and we're open to we're open yeah. to uh to, to ideas because we you're not the first person um to to say hey mm -hmm. we you should have a package so yeah well, i think we're going to, to start with um having you know five a subscription where you can have five yeah. uh logo designs per month and yeah. just come back and, and just keep getting your your logo credits i i think that's magical for for domain investors who've got like ten thousand domains or a thousand domains or even 500 domains yeah and they're wanting to build some of them out. And they want it to look professional. They don't want it to look, look pretty average. And so uh, by coming to you that they can just, bingo, they can just get those logos designed. I, I think it's absolutely magical. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm glad you tried it out. Yeah. But anyway, look, can I just say it's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you about um, that NamesCon. Uh, but what you're doing now, and I imagine there's going to be so many more things you're doing in the future. So, Richard, thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to talking to you once again about all the exciting things I know are in store for you in the future. Thanks for having me, Michael. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye.